Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to brand new Fallout 76 camp build. So, uh, this little build is inspired by the stuff that's been on the Atomic Shock over the past week or so. So, it's mostly greenhouse and garden themed stuff. And uh, a lot of that stuff's in here and scattered around. I've kind of drawn out from that and built something uh, a little bit larger in scale. And uh, it's kind of gone a little out of hand, but in terms of the details, and it's uh, come together quite nicely. I think I'm really quite pleased with this. So, let's have a look at where we are on the map. There we go. Just to the south of Morgantown there. This is a, a spot that I like quite a lot on the corner of the road here. Works well with the, the lighting and stuff. And it's quite an interesting bit of ground in terms of the shrubbery and stuff that grows back in the trees. So it's quite nice for that. Pretty good little spot. So. Quite um, a small build in some ways, but packed with details. Quite like the result. Not complex exactly, but uh, has a, a few complexities to it. So the core house here is a 2x3 foundation, and we're going to add some wooden ones around the outside here, which will go on to be our kind of greenhouse arboretum type thing. We're not really growing sort of produce in it, so it's more kind of flowers and visuals, so I'm leaning towards arboretum for a description of it there. So here is a bunch of the new stuff that's been on the Atomic Shop in the last week, including greenhouse porches, and quite happy to have these. Do wish they had better textures on the floor though. That Big concrete floor is back again and it looks terrible. As it has in a few things recently, um, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Even dirt would at least make more sense there, even if not be a massive improvement, maybe. But um, yeah, that's a bit of a, a weird choice, that one. Still, nice to have them anyway. So I'm working with the responder set here. This is an old set from uh, a season a good while ago, but there's other brick sets in the game can you certainly use, and you can mix out for a more wooden contemporary set, something like that, if you wanted to. But it creates a pretty good vibe with uh, the final look of the places, so I'm quite happy. So we're just going to get the walls and the doors in here for the main structure, and then we'll move on to the internal walls. So for double-siding doors like this into sort of two-sided walls, so we can wallpaper both sides, I'm using the barn set here. I'm actually going to change my mind and use the basic brick set, which is another option. Um, don't have to pick that up from the shop or anything, you can just... Uh, find it in-game. And of course there's contemporary set and things like that that work as well. But uh, I went for the barn here because I thought the doors would be cool, but changed my mind later, so there we go. Got the log cabin stairs, so the most kind of um, kind of realistic looking in some ways, I guess, natural looking. You get some stairs in. This is where we're starting to make a few errors, because uh, putting this staircase in and then changing my mind and adjusting things later on is going to require a lot of pulling of stuff down. And we are going to need double-sided walls up here because for some reason this log cabin set doesn't quite meet the floors. It's not quite big enough, which is terribly annoying. Walls will conceal that, but, you know, still not ideal. So, as I often like to do, just using half walls on the top floor because um, I don't like my buildings to be too tall. Uh, I do find if you use full-side walls, just, the proportions end up looking a little weird to my eye. So, smaller ones it is. Get the roof on the top here. This is the same uh, a roof set from the, the same building set. Although uh, the Helvetia one would probably have gone quite nicely on this. So, I'm going to flip these walls around because I just realised I put them in the wrong way. Sorted. And then put these back. I will be changing those uh, central half walls out for a single full-sized one. It actually ends up looking better later on. But uh, this is the way we've gone for now. Plug the last few gaps. And I'm going to start doing the awkward bits. <laughs> so... We need to get some double-sided walls up here to divide some rooms off and be able to wallpaper them. And also to hide that horrible gap up there. Unfortunately, I can't get these to double-side, which um, I would need double-sided walls below in order to show the ones above where to snap. Normally, in big air quotes, I can sit one of those dual frames on the inside here, which you have to do first, and then snap the one on the other side to double-side below so that everything will snap into place above. In this case, for some reason, it's just not working, so we're going to have to take the stairs out and everything that is attached to them and kind of start this corner again. Which is slightly annoying, but at least I know where I'm going now. Kind of. So, we'll go back from no staircase and get the double walls in. There we go. Two doors there. Two doors there. And we'll take the ones off on the ground floor in a bit, or at least the ones on the right here. The, the one at the back there is going to be dividing off the kitchen anyway. So we'll get all of these in now, and then we'll be able to put the stairs back. Except I've forgotten something. So, my initial idea here, put all of those back in, is uh, going to prove to be a slightly wasted effort, because we'll have to come back and pull it all back out again. 
had to change my mind on those windows as well in a bit, by the way. I went for single ones all the way around. So, I'm going to need an extra set of double-sided stuff just sort of at this end by the front door, but upstairs. So, uh, putting those stairs in, I am, they're going to cause the same issue we just had, but on the other side now. So, we'll have to go back and uh, correct that. One moment while I figure that out. Yep. I was really hoping I wasn't going to have to do this, but, you know, that's the way it goes. So, take three, I guess, there. Doors back in. Now let's do the double-sided walls on the other side. So this one's going to be a half wall, because it's much lower here. And then we'll need a triangle on the top of that. And for that, we're going to use the basic brick set, as we're going to want to double-side those two. And that's the easiest way of doing it by a very, very long way. So, there we go. Now we can put everything back in. Voila, let's get stairs in. We're going to need the floors back in as well, so that we can put a flamethrower trap in, because it'll need something to stand on. In more ways than one, which we'll see in a second. I've been slightly finicky about where they want to snap, as can sometimes happen when you double-side the walls. They won't snap onto bits of the stairs, so... A little bit of persuasion is required sometimes. But there we go. Now, in order to double-side this half wall and triangle, we're going to need to break out the flamethrower trap here. Otherwise, they won't sit next to each other, so... I'm going to stick the table down there, and put the flamethrower trap on the top. The roof's getting in the way there. That way we can hit both wall pieces simultaneously. Like that. There we go. Now we can just grab the matching pieces and put the other side on. One. And two. When I find it, there we go. And when I wallpaper it, you won't be able to tell the difference. So let's get the roof back in. And push on. <laughs> nice. So, now we just need to repair this bit. And there we go. So, we'll head on around. Change this uh, door out for a wall. So, our bathroom and bedroom are separated. There we go. Nice. We are coming together. So, a couple of adjustments to these half walls. I'm going to put some windows on the front here. And windows on the other side as well. Put a couple of vents on this side. But uh, I ended up changing my mind on those, because the way the roof pieces on the greenhouse that we're going to attach, the arboretum or whatever we end up calling it, are going to interact with that wall, it'll end up with um, overlap in a bit of a weird way. So, speaking of, let's get these greenhouse walls in. Using the rustic set, as I really quite like this set, it looks quite cool, like the open windows and stuff. I'm going to mix and match bits and pieces. Grab the curved corner piece here. There it is. And unfortunately that won't connect because there is that big bit of concrete up there. So we'll just swap this roof for a flat one for a moment. There we are. That should solve that problem. Wonderful. Now it's going over the window there, so I will just return that to an ordinary wall. I'll do the other one because it doesn't make sense to have a window going inside. At least not to me, anyway. And we'll get the rest of these roof pieces put on. There we go. Last one. We are all good. So, a couple more pieces just need changing out as an afterthought here, so it looks sensible. And there we go. We have more or less a solid structure. Let's get those out. We don't need those for support anymore. Wonderful. Right, just the last couple of finishing touches to the main structure now, and then I'll be able to head off and decorate. I'm going to extend this porch all the way across the front, because uh, it's going to look a little better, and I want somewhere to put the swing bench, so uh, as I don't currently have anywhere, it's going to look good. Let's do this. Very nice. But one last thing I do want to do. We're going to scoot down the side here. This wooden foundation will look better with a dirt floor when we change it out for that but it's going to look a little bit illogical because you can see underneath it that it's not full of dirt. So we're just going to cover it up a little bit. And it, it creates kind of a fun, interesting visual effect on the corner just to have a couple of these plank partitions, which are new junk walls that have been recently added by the Atomic Chop. Just adding those on the corner gives us a little bit of interest to this edge of the building as well. I do quite like. We'll grab one more, stick that on there. And once uh, I've re-logged and all the bushes and stuff have come back, we should have a pretty nice finished effect here, I think. 
It's been a little bit finicky, so I will uh, take out that foundation and then just kind of work it a little bit closer before I replace it. But while I uh, faff around with this, I'm going to wrap this here for a moment, head off and decorate, and I will see you guys on the tour in just a moment. And here we go. So yeah, pretty happy with how this came out. I've got the, the little arboretum on the side there. You can see I've added a, a red rocket just next to the main building there for somewhere to put my crafting stuff, which we'll come back to in just a moment. But kind of went crazy with the details on this, which I'm quite pleased with. It's come together nicely, in, uh, particularly with the, the trees coming back. Most of the trees here, in fact, are just the ones that are found in situ. I haven't had to add many. I think I added one yeah, back here. And uh, it works really nicely. It kind of pulls it back with the shrubbery and everything. I do like having the car on the side. Got my vendors out the side here, just went for the basic, um, the original vendor, as it's kind of got a smaller footprint, works better with that little patch of ground there, as some of the slightly larger ones tend to float a little bit. A little bit of power there, just kept it simple for this one, basically all of it's on this side, apart from one I've got hidden on top of the, the red rocket, but that one's out of sight and very, very minor. See the boards are put up around the back of the arboretum there, kind of. They do a nice job of hiding that foundation that looked weird on its own and just give you that bit of a wasteland scrappy, it's been shored up after the fact vibe. Let me collect on in too. Yeah, I do quite like the look here. I feel like uh, it's, it looks like something that you could stumble across as if it was meant to be in the game all along, except maybe a little more colourful than the rest of Morgantown. Swing across the front. Got a bunch of the stuff that's been on the Atomic Shop recently, as I said, in this build. That uh, sort of swing bench thing there is uh, a favourite of mine, although it is kind of weird. The colours and the the metal are just a bit odd. They don't quite match anything, so they stick out quite a lot. But uh, I also kind of like it as well. Finally found an excuse to use the forklift truck as well. Forklifting. Eh, you know what I mean. That thing. As uh, I hadn't found anywhere it fits up until now, but next to a red rocket kind of works. Speaking of, let's have a look in here. This I have kept fairly basic, so I got to the mostly the end of the decoration. I had all my workbenches stored away and only a little bit of budget left. So I wanted to put the workbenches in, make it something functional and practical as a player camp, rather than having to dive into a shelter all the time or something. So I ended up settling on this. I tried a couple of different prefabs first, but this was the only one I was really happy with. And, you know, a little throwback there to Fallout 4. I've done something similar to this before in terms of the layout and the design, and it's fairly simple. As I say, I really did not have much budget for this, so uh, I'm quite pleased with how far I managed to make virtually no budget go on that. Definitely happy with the results there. So there's a, a tiny little generator up on the roof there just to give it a little bit of light and stuff as well. There's my shelter entrance tucked in down there, and we've got the sap collector as well for adhesive. That thing has been... In and out of the Atomic Shop, this is the first time it was convenient for me to pick it up, so I finally did that. The new uh, sundial there. This guy looks weird. It's, in fact, it's bounced on his thumb, it's kind of funny, but uh, yeah, I do find that thing a little bit weird, but also cool. Really like the new um, letterbox there, postbox thing. That thing, the barn one. Uh, I think that's really quite cute. It's cool. Goes quite well with the vibe, I think. A couple of little bits and pieces of detail as well. Uh, again, looking at the floor on these foundations, um, still not keen. Don't like them at all. I kind of wish they'd done something different, like wood or any anything that's not a uh, bold, horrible white concrete look. There's the new uh, wind chime. That's the word. Nearly forgot that then. It's uh, quite a fun thing. Can't tell you how it sounds because I've got another one up there. I should really have thought of that, but uh, it's a cool looking thing nonetheless. We'll make our way inside. And here we go. Hello, Yasmin. Walking straight up to me as I open the door. Feel like you've been waited for there, don't you? <laughs> so here we have our living room. Kind of cosy. This place is small, so not a lot of room in here, but, you know, got space to sit and chill and relax. Definitely like the vibe. I like the way this new, newish, I should say, white wallpaper contrasts with the, the darker wood there. That looks pretty cool. Um, I haven't used that wallpaper before, and I do like the way it looks. It's nice. Uh, I wasn't sure. I thought it was going to be a bit too bright in comparison at first, but it's come out quite nicely. Merged a whole bunch of stuff onto the shelf down there. Thought it looked all right in the back. Hindsight, maybe I should have put a dining table there if, for a, a touch of realism, but I do quite like the uh, displays and stuff. So, Yasmin's opened this door that I did think about locking, but uh, kind of want to leave it open so people can have a look around if they want to. This is the terrarium that is the current Fallout first monthly freebie. 
I really like this thing. It's quite cool. We've got a little pet lizard in there. Um, and I didn't realise this at first, but you can actually activate it. That's what sent him wandering out of his can onto his rock there. There's a tap on glass option when you've got the HUD on. And uh, we'll encourage him to move from the can to the rock and back again. Yeah, it's a nice little detail and effect that. I get that we're using for the flickering bulb. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I find that sort of thing a bit distracting myself, but... Uh, yeah, I do like it. It's a pretty cool little addition. That's a nice little Fallout first freebie. So you can see there that I've changed the doorways over to the ones from the basic brick set because I just felt it, it looked a little better for an internal door than uh, the bold white uh, of the barn door frames. So that's what we went for. And we'll head on through into the kitchen. Small, compact, and in a vein that I've done recently. Squeeze me uh, washer and dryer on the end there. Gone with the, the blue set. Still waiting on uh, a matching cooking station for this and for the uh, the cream coloured set, but uh, it'll happen one day, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, I think it looks alright. Cozy, small, squeezed everything in that I needed, and uh, got that kitchen vibe. A few nice bits on the side there. Merged a couple of little bits in on, well, actually, only merged in the uh, butcher's block there, didn't I? But uh, it does work quite nicely. Got a coffee machine, gotta have that. That uh, is the new Helvetia door and the brand new trellis arch thing, which I really didn't know where to put that, but then decided it would probably look good in the sort of arboretum here. So there it is, and um, I think I was right on that. Looks quite nice. The door has clipped slightly through it, but you know, can't have everything. And here we go. I've tried to go for a, a garden, kind of jungly type vibe. So we've got the um, litters of plants that are merged into the planters there. We've got crops around. That's more for a visual effect than for a practical effect. Put a couple of birds in here to give that kind of feeling. Put the vines up on the inside of the walls. Turns out they're quite happy to snap to the inside as well, at least with these uh, walls anyway. Kind of wondering whether or not I should have maybe saved a couple of lights somewhere and put more vines on the brick walls. Kind of okay that I didn't though. So it mixes things up. I think the whole thing, the busyness and the, sort of the greens and the splashes of colour give a kind of somewhat tropical vibe in here, somewhat. And uh, I quite like the effect. i say, not a practical space, but uh, a nice visual one, I think. I really quite like it. Close that door, have a little look around the rest of the house. Yeah, nice, clean, functional kitchen. Kind of pre-war-ish, but uh, I do like. The sugar bombs fridge is maybe a bit much, but uh, yeah, I felt it was a better fit for this, really, I think. I quite like the look. Popcorn machine is not technically wired in. Don't know if it's going to work anyway or not. Shouldn't, but doesn't mean it won't. But I thought it was a nice fit in the corner there as well. as a little bit of detail. Uh, let's take a look upstairs. This standing light was uh, on the Atomic Shop quite recently and inspired me to use it again as it's been a while since I have. It's a pretty good light, actually, that one. It's a decent amount of light. It's not too in your face. It takes up a fair bit of space, but it's reasonably cooperative when you're trying to place it as well, so it's good to... Uh, Good item, that one. A little bit of decoration up here, but kept it fairly minimal. Just a couple of pictures and a display. It is a, a place to pass through rather than to hang out. And we'll have a look around the bathroom. Use the footprint rug there. The little curve to that rug just felt right in front of the shower. Quite like that. You have to pretend there are towels on the table there. I went for double sink effects, which uh, I'm not quite sure what inspired me to do that, but something did. So, quite like that. I used the camp unit to do the inverted version of the merge, where it pushes two things further apart rather than closer together, uh, in order to stop those sinks kind of sticking through the floor below. They sometimes look a little bit too tall when you do that, but uh, it looks okay in that space for some reason. And we'll head on through into the bedroom. And another small space, but crammed a whole bunch of detail in that I quite like. That's the new dresser there. A few little bits and pieces I picked up recently on there. I don't remember to use that bookshelf stash box very often, but I uh, quite liked that I did this time. And we have one of the new shelves from the current season. This is the surfboard ones. I wasn't sure about these, to be honest, but um, they're available. It's cap stuff, so I picked it up. Uh, as it turns out, well, these are actually really growing on me, or this particular shelf is. There's plenty of room to cram stuff on there. It's big, but not too big. I felt it might be a bit obnoxious. The surf theme, I'm not convinced about, but on the whole, I think it looks all right. I'm quite happy with it. And uh, yeah, nice, busy, cosy, comfy little place to live, I think. So, 
there we have it. One arboretum house home thing with a whole ton of detail. Just down from Morgantown. Hope you folks enjoyed that one. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. Very much appreciate. Social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all that good stuff down below. Notification bell and all that if you'd like to keep up to date with everything going on. And do join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing Fallout 76 here. And playing a few other bits and pieces on the side as well. It should be good fun over the next few weeks and months. I hope you'll join us for that. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.